all-weather weapon system designed by Republic Aviation Corporation to perform the air defense mission is designated the F-103. With this weapon, together with surf radar, the Air Force will have intercept capability against weapons faster than Mach 2 approaching at over 60,000 feet. Utilizing a dual cycle power plant which provides ramjet propulsion, the airplane is capable of effective combat action at 80,000 feet and if necessary can make three attacks on the approaching weapon due to its ultimate design capability of Mach 3.7. In addition, the airplane can zoom to well over 100,000 feet. Such performance necessitates complete enclosure for pilot protection during emergency escape. A pilot's capsule designed as part of the F-103 weapon system is shown here in the mock-up stage. The requirement for adequate clearance between capsule and airplane during emergency escapes dictated the inclusion of rails. By designing for two functions, these rails have also been adapted to allow the use of the capsule as the normal means of entrance and exit. When fully raised, flight controls automatically engage and the pilot has full accessibility to all cockpit controls. During normal exit, the capsule is lowered on the telescopic rails. During an emergency escape, the sliding door would have automatically closed before catapult ejection. Within this concept, Detailed design is being completed, which will provide pressurization bottles if studies indicate a requirement, oxygen bottles, emergency radio, and oxygen demand regulator. If the pilot elects to eject, enough explosive force is provided to guarantee a minimum six-foot clearance from airframe at worst flight conditions. Two seconds after ejection, the drogue chute is deployed by means of a thruster pellet device. This slows down the capsule, and an altitude velocity detector will release the drogue and deploy the main chute. With main chute open, the capsule descends at a sea level rate of 25 feet per second. A shock absorber is provided to cushion ground impact and a stabilizing keel for upright flotation in the event of water landing. All test installations will have thruster pellet release mechanisms to release the drogue chute and mechanical or electrical timing devices for main chute. Aerodynamic testing began in mid-1953 in the Mach 2 free jet facility at Wallops Island. One twenty-fourth scale models were ejected into the airstream under varying speed and CG conditions. Data obtained here, plus ballistic data obtained at the Naval Ordnance Laboratory, indicated excessive complex motion about all three axes and the need for stabilization to limit accelerations imposed upon the pilot. WADC also conducted a stability program, generally confirming Republic results. Using linearized wing theory and data obtained so far, stabilizing fin configurations were built and model tested at MIT in early 1954. Data was obtained on split X, split V, and straight V configurations at speeds ranging from Mach 1.51 to 3.0. Both short and long boom configurations were tested. The longer type proved most efficient in that the fins were less subject to blanketing through rotation. In August 1954, transonic tests were run at Mach 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 1.2. Split X and V fin configurations were also tested at Wallops Island. By variation of fin area, data was obtained at simulated altitudes from 15,000 to 80,000 feet. Mach number range was 0.8 to 3.7. Parachutes and release mechanisms were first tested on a centrifuge tower at the Pioneer Parachute Company. Drogue chute and main chute sequencing was prime objective. In these tests, main chute release was made by a mechanical timer and drogue chute release by spring ejection. 
This method of release proved satisfactory in that successful deployment of both chutes was obtained. At the request of WADC, however, a thruster pellet system of drogue chute release was designed, tested, and incorporated into the capsule configuration. The extension rails along which the capsule will eject were tested by reaction motors to determine friction loads and rates of acceleration to ensure operation within human tolerance. Other mechanical operations of the system were checked using a capsule manufactured for the drop test program. Early in 1955, further work was done at MIT on curved fin configurations. The curve was designed to simplify incorporation of the capsule into the airframe by making the fins conform to outside fuselage contour, allowing them to be recessed and become part of the airplane skin while in the up position. Upon ejection, they will drop down for stabilization. Again, various boom locations and fin configurations were tested and pressure distributions recorded. The inboard boom configuration proved aerodynamically feasible and best from a structure's viewpoint. At this point, the development program had been in progress almost three and one half years. The comprehensive design work, computations, and mechanical and aerodynamic testing all indicated the feasibility of the capsule system for pilot escape purposes. By April 1955, the full-scale drop tests were ready to begin. Rails were incorporated in the bomb bay of a B-47, and a steel capsule fabricated in WADC shops was ground tested and then used for the first three drops. A straight fin configuration was used with the steel capsule since primary objective was sequencing and deployment of the drogue and main chute. The B-47 installation proved satisfactory and capsule ejection and separation during each drop was successful. Some mechanical operations, however, controlling drogue and main chute sequencing were proved unsatisfactory. In the first drop, the drogue chute opened but did not release from the capsule and thus prevented main chute deployment. Ground impact was severe and extensive damage occurred. For the second drop, a larger drogue was used and its attachment point modified. Container distortion, however, allowed premature release of the main chute and several panels were broken. Despite their damage, descent rate was slow enough to land the capsule intact. For drop three, containers were strengthened and the release and deployment apparatus functioned correctly. At this point, stability considerations took precedence over mechanical operations since some results indicated that a high roll rate both before and after drogue chute deployment was causing some of the previous difficulties. The next three drops, made with an aluminum capsule having curved fins, confirmed this approach. From knowledge gained so far, it is expected that future test programs will verify the proper dorsal configuration, drogue chute attachment points, and tail boom design, and result in a stable capsule for emergency escape. They also indicated that initial high roll rates upon ejection might impose too many accelerations upon the pilot. Therefore, it was decided to incorporate a roll limitation system. The 
drop test and six degree of freedom computer analyses disclosed an inherent dynamic coupling causing the high roll rates and indicated that the use of dorsal fins will solve the problem. One aluminum capsule and an anthropomorphic dummy have been completely instrumented to measure forces and rates. Work accomplished by Air Force, Aeromedical, and Aircraft Laboratory personnel has established design criteria. The work of Colonel John Staff in determining limits of human tolerance is the main factor considered in designing the installation to achieve tolerable rate of onset accelerations during ejection and separation and stability parameters governing maximum permissible rates of roll. By utilizing the experience...